Good day to those who are listening and watching this video presentation. We are going to discuss about Lesson 8, Understanding the Chemistry of Lust, Love, and Attachment. Reporting, truly yours, Erika Jill Crocero. I will report about the first and second stage of love, and my partner Rochelle D. Mokire will about to report the topics under the third stage. At the end of the lesson, the student must have understood the chemistry of lust, love, and attachment, participated actively in the activities, and appreciated the gift of love. So before we start, we have here surprising effects by the signs of love. Did you know that guys are more likely to say, I love you? The heart of a people in love are in sync. Love lowers our serotonin levels, which makes us crazy. Love can be addictive literally. Holding hands with a loved one can reduce pain. And we tend to fall in love with someone similar looking. Now, let's proceed. What is love? Everyone has his own definition of love, but did we know that love is a set of emotion and behavior characterized by intimacy, passion, and commitment. It involves care, closeness, protectiveness, attraction, affection, and trust. There are three stages of love. The first stage, the lust. The second stage, the attraction. And the last stage, the attachment. Later on, we will find out what are these stages and what are the hormones and neurotransmitters involved. The first stage, the lust. This is the first stage of love and it's driven by sex hormones testosterone and estrogen in both men and women. Testosterone and estrogen are two basic types of hormones present equally to men's and women's body that excites the feeling of lust within the brain. In other words, when we feel lust, hormones testosterone and estrogen are the hormones making people feel in that way. The second stage, the attraction. This space is said to be one of the beautiful moments of life. This is the pace when a person actually starts to feel the love. This is the amazing time when you are truly lovestruck and can think of little else. Scientists think that the three main neurotransmitters involved in this stage are adrenaline, dopamine, and serotonin. What is adrenaline? The initial stages of falling for someone activates your stress response, increasing your blood levels of adrenaline and cortisol. This has the charming effect that when you unexpectedly bump into your loved one, you start to sweat, your heart raises, and your mouth goes dry. Next, what is dopamine? Helen Fisher asked newly love struck couples to have their brain examined and discovered that they have high levels of the neurotransmitters dopamine. This chemical stimulates desire and reward by triggering an intense rush of pleasure. According to Fisher, couples often show the signs of surging dopamine, wherein it increases their energy, less needing for sleep or food, and focus attention and exquisite delight in the smallest details of this novel relationship. And lastly, the serotonin. One of the most important chemical that may explain why when you are falling in love, your new lovers keep popping into your mind and thoughts. How amazing, right? Undergoing these processes involving hormones and neurotransmitters. Does love need to be blind? Newly smitten loves often idealize their partner, magnifying their virtues and explaining away their flaws, says Ellen Birdshead, a leading researcher in the psychology of love. New couples also exalt the relationship itself. It's very common to think that they have a relationship that is closer and more special than anyone else's. Psychologists think that we need this rose-tinted view. It makes us want to stay together to enter the next stage of love, the attachment. After the wild feelings of lust and then the excitement of attraction, then comes attachment. It is when a couple passes through the two stages of love successfully, the time of bonding with each other becomes powerful. Attachment is about helping the couple to take the relationship to advanced levels. It instigates the feeling of bearing children and falling in love with them wholeheartedly.
Okay. Scientists think there might be two major hormones involved in this feeling of attachment. The oxytocin and the vasopressin. When we say oxytocin, the cattle hormone is this a powerful hormone released by men and women during orgasm. It probably depends the feelings of attachment and makes couples feel much closer to one another after they have had sex. The theory goes that the more sex a couple has, the deeper their bonds becomes. Oxytocin also seems to help cement the strong bond between mom and baby and is released during childbirth. It is also responsible for a mom's breast automatically releasing milk at the mere sight or sound of her young baby. For example, when contraction of the uterus starts during childbirth, oxytocin release. This state stimulates more contractions and more contractions and more oxytocin to be released. In this way, contractions increase in intensity and frequency. This is also a positive feedback involved in the milk ejection reflex. While vasopressin is another important hormone in the long-term commitment stage and is released after sex. Vasopressin is also called antidiuretic hormone, works with your kidneys to conserve thirst. Its potential role in long-term relationships was discovered when scientists look at the prior revolt. Prior revolts indulge in far more sex than is strictly necessary for the purposes of reproduction. They also like humans, firm fellow stable parents. According to Drug Bank, Vasopressin is a peptide hormone used to increase blood pressure in patients with vasodilatory shock who are resistant to fluid and cacolamine therapy. Understanding the science of lust, attraction, and attachment can help you develop more realistic expectations of relationships. And now, here are the five tools to guide you through the stages of love. First, don't mistake last for love. Give a new relationship time before you start dreaming of a future together. Second, with the irresistible cocktail of chemicals, our brain entices us to fall in love. So, we believe we are choosing a partner, but we may merely be a happy victim of nature's lovely plan. Third, we call it love. We call it love when you are ready to fight all odds. When you give love but not expecting anything in return. Fourth, it feels like love. People who are in love generally feel a powerful sense of empathy toward their beloved. Feeling the other person's pain as their own and being willing to sacrifice anything for the other person. And lastly, but the most exhilarating of all human emotions is probably nature's beautiful way of keeping the human species alive and reproducing. And now that we've finished discussing our topic, understanding the chemistry of lust, love, and attachment, here are the reflections that we need to answer. First, continue the unfinished sentences. I am happy to know that I discovered that I am surprised that I learned that I appreciate that and lastly make a passage about love. That's all for today. God bless us all.